Well, it's Cincinnati week. This is the Sunday questions video, which I'm getting to very late. Uh, how at least I'm making it before the game is over. So <laughs> we'll work with what we've got. And I think what we've got is a cat coming this way. Hmm? Okay, come on. Oh my, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, first note actually comes from the uh, Neil Brown radio show tonight. Nope, there he goes. Okay. Uh, twice, Coach Brown referred to this as Frazier's last year. So it would seem that th the decision has been made. I thought he might decide to come back uh, for a good shot at the championship uh, next year, the conference championship, but uh, unless something changes, it appears that uh, we will have a new center next year, which seems like a new era. You know, it's been the Frazier era for quite a while. Uh, whether that will end up being Yates or Livingston, we'll have to wait and see. Now, questions for this week. And in case you don't know, uh, my Sunday questions are the questions that I think I would ask on Sunday if I hadn't seen the game on Saturday. I find it gives me a slightly different perspective than just asking what do they have to do to win. Because <clears throat> the answer to that one is always score more points than the other team. Uh, biggest question is overall for the team. And it's, did they bounce back emotionally, psychologically? Uh, the loss at Oklahoma, I don't know if it takes more out of you emotionally when you don't play well and lose big, or when you play your best and still get, and be, get beaten. Uh, in this case, they did not play well. So... That means, okay, hey, you know, I can play better. Yeah. But, you know, does it dent the confidence more than it stirs the anger and determination? It's been a grit based team all season. So, let us hope that grit hangs around for a while longer and they come into this game just flat out deter well much like Oklahoma did last week against West Virginia just determined to play their best and beat the crap out of the opponent um, as an additional note um, <laughs> well that additional note kind of slipped into my mind and it slipped right back out again so we'll let that pass Defensive. What adjustments did the defense make? Brown and, uh, you know, Leslie both talked about, you know, getting exposed. You know, Oklahoma did some things that brought out the worst in the defense. We knew there were weak spots. Uh, they hid them as best they could for a while, but with the pressure not getting there, safety's not necessarily covering you know as well as they should. Uh, the problems really came to the surface. But what adjustments can they make with what they have? Again, you can't do what you don't have the pieces for. You know, it's like the beginning of the year they ordered the. Lego college def football defense set and then a bunch of the pieces got broken. You can't build that set with broken pieces. And then you read the fine print on the box and it says green pieces may need 12 to 36 months to mature. <laughs> yeah, you don't have a you know, hundred players of equal talent 
all fully ready. That's just not the way it works, which is part of the joy of the college football game. Um, you know, it's part of what makes it different from the NFL. You can't go out and, you know, grab a player in a trade or, you know, free agency or, you know, any other way. So I don't know. Well, of course, obviously I don't know. I'm a guy sitting on his butt at home doing this video. I'm not a football coach. So I hope that the coaches have more ideas than I can come up with. I'm sure they will come up with something they have all season. Doesn't always work. I kind of think we'll see Floyd, you know, putting pressure on, but they tried that against Oklahoma, and it, the one time he got there, he whiffed on the quarterback. So, we'll see. Um, and speaking of the quarterback, did they contain the quarterback. Of course they did not do that against Oklahoma. We're up against another you know, dual threat quarterback. He's run a lot. We have stopped several of these kind of guys. Others, we haven't. Uh, and sometimes it's been not containing the middle. More often it's been not containing the edge. So, did they contain the quarterback? And of course, I've said this the last three weeks. Did the defensive line get push? Even if the line doesn't get pressure on the quarterback, at least enough to hurry and harass, getting pressure, pushing the line back, shrinks the run lanes, and opens up possibilities for other guys to get there with pressure, if you're bringing it. Uh, so we have to have the high energy, the quick, tough line. And did, you know, um, Cutter regain the form he'd shown in the two previous games. I think both linebackers were just a mess against Oklahoma, as best I could tell. Uh, but, and he, you know, back to the Lego uh, metaphor, uh, we're playing with two Mike linebacker pieces. You know, all of the Will linebacker pieces are broken. Uh, so, and it's actually still going to be a bit of a problem next year. Uh, yeah. uh, I'm not sure who we have coming in who might be able to play early. We're going to have a lot of talent. It's just going to be mostly focused at the mic position. So we'll have to see there. On the offensive side, did Green step back up? He had been making slow but steady improvement in the previous games. And that was really making a difference. He has to get back to at least where he was before the Oklahoma game. Preferably needs to take that next small step. You know, cutting, you know, He's, he's cut down the big mistakes. You know, I mean, mostly he's not making big mistakes. Small mistakes are still there. So he has to continue to cut the size of mistake and the number. You know, and that, you know, and a lot of it, again, you know, the eyes, the eyes, the eyes. <laughs> I suppose you could say a quarterback is, you know, Top and bottom, eyes and feet, eyes and feet, eyes and feet. Uh, you've got to look in the right spot, see only what you need to see, but see it clearly. And you have to get your footwork right. Uh, and then 
you, know, you build the rest of the body up from that. Uh, which running back led the way? Now that is assuming that at least one running back is going to have a really good game. Cincinnati has a good run defense, but somebody should be able to break through. Of course, we're all still waiting for White to take one 30 yards or more to the house. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure he is getting tired of being one tackle away. Uh, one shoestring, one block, something. Uh, if Donaldson plays, don't know how much he will play. I assume Johnson will be the number two back, and of course he's quite capable of having a really good game. Johnson is capable. I'm not betting on Johnson. The only thing I'm betting on Johnson is that he will hit the portal. Uh, Clement was back last week. He, you know, We didn't see a lot of him. I don't think he was really quite himself. So is Clement back or was Clement back to being Clement? It does give us a little something different on the outside. That combination of size and speed, of course you get Clement and Ray on opposite sides, or anytime they're in the game together, and along with, you know, Carter. Um, I kind of put Carter lower on the list because he has been kind of up and down in various ways. But we will need him to make, you know, some good catches. You know, people kept comparing him to Fort Wheaton, and unfortunately it's been too accurate a comparison because he has had that same erratic nature. Um, so, so, and <clears throat> still dealing with the receivers. Did Ray and Gallagher continue to improve? With Gallagher, that is partly going to mean did he get some more downfield routes and did he run them well? Uh, there's a complexity to route running in the modern game that takes time and of course he did not come in as an experienced receiver. So, yeah, I would like to see him get some nice gains on the runs, uh, maybe catch a short pass or two, but I would like to see something downfield. Uh, and, of course, Ray has been, he's been the biggest downfield threat, particularly while Clement was out. Uh, so, if those two continue to improve, bodes well for the last bit of this season in a bowl game and bodes really well for 2024. Um, not going to really deal with special teams, you know. Well, of course, some of you know, did Fox break a punt return? But special teams are a bit of a mess because of the ripple effects of the injuries, uh, in part because some of the people injured were on special teams. Also now we have guys who would lose their red shirt if they play special teams. And with the injuries you have more starters playing more of the plays, so you don't want to add special teams to their list. So. We've been playing a lot of new guys on special teams, guys who aren't ideal for the role they're playing. I think that's why there have been so many fair catches, including on kickoffs. It's possible that another week of practice will have these new guys playing better. But, again, it wasn't where they were planning or expected to play when the season started. So it's not an ideal situation for them. And we'll just have to see if 
special teams can play cohesively. And of course that's more a matter of what they've done during the practice because if they don't practice well <laughs> the coach is going to tell Fox to take a lot of fair catches. Well, I think that's it for this week. It's a little short in some respects. Some might say it's still too long, I don't know. But I have a lot of things that I have to get done because I've got a lot of... <laughs> well, let's just say there's an awful lot that needs to get done and not nearly enough time or energy to do it. So I will say, so long. Let's enjoy the game. And I will see you, well, now it will, it will be Monday before I get a reaction up to the game because I will be out of town, uh, so, and I'm not set up easily to go live or, you know, work away from home. So, I will talk to you on Monday, and with any luck at all, we'll be talking about beating Cincinnati by at least 14 points. So long.